we're here live with uh, Raul De La Torre. How are you doing? Good, good. Enjoying the lockdown. Exactly. <laughs> the unusual funny. vacation. <laughs> Yeah. Not, not too much fun teaching, you know, teaching kids at home and things like that. Oh, yeah, no. Well, the good thing, I'm just the PE teacher. My wife is a headmaster, so we're good. She does all the <laughs> academics. <laughs> you like to do art. Do you get art class? Uh, I'll try. No, he doesn't want to. <laughs> yeah, I tried last uh, Sunday, uh, you know, and I enjoyed to play with uh, drawing and play with watercolors. He was, no, he's like, he's like, no, I'm good. Video games. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> That's okay. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, Raul, I know one of the tiny silver linings in all of this has been us having time to maybe take a virtual visit with an artist and for people to get to see and meet and hear the inspiration or learn about, you know, I know you've got poems and I know you have all sorts of, what inspires you? What inspires you to create your work? Well, in this, uh, the latest series I've been working on the last four or five years, that is these poems, um, I try to transform words into color. So I, I go on a poem, um, lately have been this French Romanian poet, Benjamin Fonden, and um, I tried that to, to find the color that resonates when I read that poem. Uh, so I'm always like sketching and and taking notes on the side of the books, um, writing, and then I go over the piece. And it's funny because this is a very sane thing, but then when I go to the studio, it's the physical part. And I, I enjoy that balance that I'm missing right now with this situation, because uh, the painting part of my work is very physical. Uh, I, I paint with the canvas on the floor, so I just walk around you know, and keep adding layers until I feel it's done. Um, and then I have the breathing and the embroidery part that is like a more calm approach. Um, and I'm missing that. <laughs> Everything is too quiet, too calm. <laughs> I, I need to go to the studio, <laughs> so, yeah. So right now you can only work on the embroidery part. Is that accurate? Yes, yes. And usually I have, um, just before I went to the fairs, I had a lot of um, uh, painting done, particularly with those, uh, like the ones you have behind, those fields So, yeah. <laughs> I've been doing a lot of that, making new ones, and uh, working this one I have behind, that is a commission, and another commission that I had uh, for a client in Texas. So, um, but I'm getting, you know, I'm soon I'm not gonna have anything to embroider. <laughs> I'm gonna start to have to mend socks or something like that. <laughs> the piece, let's just for an example, the painting behind you, and you're saying that the when you're reading a poem that then it relates, you connect it to colors, and then that is what creates the layering and, and the tapestry, for lack of a better word. But do you, <laughs> Do you ever have a poem, have a, read a poem and have a color in mind, but then when you actually start placing it out to canvas, it doesn't, it doesn't sing to you the same way and you may change midstream or how does that work for you, your process? Yes, it does. Because sometimes in your head um, or the sketchbooks that I do before to start a piece, because I play in, in small scale, they're like three inches by three inches um, before I start the canvas. And then once in the canvas in a large scale, it's not working and I have to, you know, uh, adapt to the situation uh, or you want a color to show underneath more. You know that the, the underneath layers are very bright, you saw on my paintings, even when the top it's, uh, I've been working a lot with blues and with uh, neutral colors, uh, grays, blacks, whites. Uh, but underneath is very bright coloring, the first layers. And sometimes I want that to show more and I have to overwork all that, you know. So yeah, sometimes it's a question of aesthetics too. You have to... Sure. Yeah, yeah. Like this one, for example, like I made some changes after I started the piece, you know. Because then you see the embroider brings the, the, the first layers back on top. And sometimes if you go too crazy with the last layers, all this gets hidden and, uh, you know, I try to work again. 
on the piece until I get the effect that I want. How does it differ canvas versus paper? Paper is difficult. <laughs> canvas, so you can be, you know, because with canvas, it's, you can be rough, you can be pulling, you can be fixing the, in paper, you know, you can pass once and very slow. So the time that I do that large embroidery there on a, on a canvas, it takes me the same to do a paper. And, you know, you have to, art is hard, but the financial part is important. And um, it just take, consumes too much time, the paper. And now I don't make much mistakes, but in the beginning, I remember like going the whole embroidery and I went to the end and you want to pull a little and the whole thing opens. And it's like, oh my God, <laughs> you rip off the whole thing. And then so, you have to yeah, start and, all over. It's well, what I was doing is I make a wider embroidery, but yeah, you were losing like three or four hours of embroidery. So yes, I like paper and I like the effect of uh, the final piece on paper is fantastic. But uh, yeah, it's a lot of work. For example, I used to make commissions with large paper, like 40 uh, by 60 things. Like, and I stopped because I had to build stretchers. Um, you know that Arches paper, they sell the rolls of paper. And the way to get it flat, you have to get the paper wet, put weight on top, and a couple of days later work on it. But the way it gets flat is the fibers in the cotton uh, break. So once you start to embroider, it was falling apart. And it was very hard to find paper, flat paper on those sizes. But yeah, I don't do large pieces of paper anymore. Yeah, not fun. <laughs> And Raul, explain to me the difference for you, working on a piece like the poems piece behind you versus the piece that I'm sitting in front of that's more of a controlled, I would say, picture. Um, so what's your process or how, did, how does it differ for you? Well, I, I, was, I started doing the, uh, the uh, embroidery on the pieces, the field circulos, that means stretch and color by the one you have behind. Um, and. Um, I never used color before. It's funny, when I was still working in Barcelona, everything was like earth colors, blacks, maybe reds, like going crazy. Uh, but then in California, I start to discover many artists here work with color. And you go to the museums, you go to galleries, and I wanted to introduce that. So I started to explore with the color. I brought the embroidery because, you know, we uh, Barcelona is a province and Catalonia in general. Our industrial revolution was with textile. So many artists here use textile, like Miro, Tapias, they use fiber in their works. And um, that's why I, I try to mix both things. The color that I found here and the textile coming from where I'm from, you know. Mm. And the difference between the fields and the other ones is like, as you can see to me in the beginning, I, I think I made more than 500 of these uh, threads and colors and uh, at some point you want to do something different you know and uh, I start working on on the poem series you know and they have a lot of meaning to me I, I just love every single piece um, with uh, the threads and colors I love to make those pieces and you know it's it's easier because it's not so many like to make that size it's like eight, nine hours of embroidery. Uh, that's like probably 18 inches wide. To make the same in, in the fields is half the time because I don't have to be changing colors constantly. So uh, the process is much easier on those than on these ones. But I just love the effect on these ones, you know. Well, there's a great energy to both works, but I agree there is something intriguing about the poems pieces. It's almost like every time you see it, you notice something different. Yes. Yes, and is that those little hints of color to like pop out in the middle of nowhere? Yeah, I love that. And I, I, I love that. It's the, the process what I was telling you before. When you bring it, sometimes some of them have like 14, 15 layers. And when you bring the first layer up with embroidery and the color pops out of nowhere. And, uh, and you know, I do those videos where it's the whole process of the piece. And people say, oh, wow, that's where that comes from. <laughs> so, yeah. That's so neat. Yeah, I, I'm in love with these paintings. <laughs> if some of them is like, oh, I wish I could keep them. <laughs>
every one of them. Yeah, I, can, I agree with Rachel. I think that when we've had clients, every time somebody sees one of your pieces, there's just this response that comes to it. The colors just, it makes people feel good. It makes people feel happy. And there's a, even it just, it changes the space that, that they're in. There are many people yeah. tell me that. It's like, I, I have people when I go to fairs, it's like, oh, are you Raul? Yeah, it's like, yeah. oh, I have one of you. It makes me so happy every morning. It's like, Oh, that's good. <laughs> to me, that's the best compliment I ever had. You know, like, oh, it makes me happy. It's like, well, you know, that's what art is about. It makes you like people ask me why you don't. To me, I could title every one of the fields and have a different because they are based on things that are in my head constantly. And um, people ask me why you don't put titles, you put numbers to those series. It's like, you know what? I think that we're in a society, particularly the last since the creation of internet, where we open a screen and someone is telling us what to do, what to buy, what to watch, what to... So if you can sing from one of my pieces for two minutes and find what it means to you or makes you think about the piece in particular or evoke something for you or takes you somewhere, that's the goal. You know, I don't need to tell you what that means to me. It's like what that means to you. You know, be, be inside your 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 head, Raúl. It's so interesting. <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> you don't want to be inside my head. Trust me. <laughs> I was telling to my wife that I am having a hard time sleeping because I'm always very. I wake up and I walk every day five to ten miles. Uh, I've been doing that every day inside the house, meaning so it's just five miles. But my wife, I driving her crazy. <laughs> it's like you're a crazy person. It's like I have to do ten thousand steps every day. And uh, I go to sleep and I'm for three hours thinking about, like the other day I was thinking about my grandparents. They lived the civil war in Spain and my grandma was 13 siblings and they went all over the world. They dispersed and they, they had four kids and each kid went to a different family member because they were like left wing. So in the losing side of the war. And, um, and we're complaining we have food we have toilet paper, we have everything we need. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, you know, we offer the faucet and it's water there. They didn't know where the kids were for four years. Uh, and they couldn't communicate, wasn't phones, wasn't cell phones, was no internet. They were just in the dark many days, no light, no water, no nothing. In a city that was not their city. So it's like, you know, it's not that bad. No, we have to keep it right perspective, now. you're right. Right. Yeah. We will survive this and we will come out on the other side. Stronger, yeah. Stronger. Yeah. And I and let's hope that with a lesson well learned. Yeah. Absolutely. And appreciate <laughs> things like art and other beautiful things. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, meaning it's that it, a little bit. Yeah. It's it's what makes us humans, you know. The music and art and theater and yeah, I miss those things. I miss well, I miss and I don't because now I the other day I was watching uh, Peter and the Wolf, the Royal Opera House, is doing streaming all their operas and it's uh, and their ballets. It's fantastic, and it's for free. <laughs> so you know, <laughs> we cannot complain at all. I Meaning, if you want to keep your mind busy and be, in, we have all the chances inside the house. Yeah. We are very lucky to be part of this generation. Just 30 years ago, this wouldn't have been possible. You know, absolutely. So. Well, Raúl, this this has been. Awesome visit. We <laughs> to hear about kind of what you're thinking and, and what inspires you. And I think in our own little tiny way, our thought in doing this was to hopefully just make people think about things a little bit differently, take a moment to hear a different perspective, to hear where some inspiration comes from and they'd be able to spread a little bit of happiness, you know, and, and, and joy in our way to the best that we can, so. Yes, yes, it's what it's about, you know. Go through these hard times, come, go through the light, come out in a better and brighter way and learn to do things different, <laughs> you know. And that, and not worry too much, you know. Could not agree more. Don't worry, <laughs> you can't control it anyway, so. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Well, thank you so much, Raul. This has been great. Thanks, Raul. <laughs> thank, thank you. Good you. to see Take you guys. Care. See you Bye. Good. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.